Did you see the movie? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I liked the movie. It was unhinged a bit. And I was like, you know what? I'm fine with this. I got uh, this. That's totally cool, just watching it, but I didn't expect too much of it. Like, Scott mm. called so many books for it now. Like, the lore has just expanded so much. It's like, I, I don't know. even know if I can keep up anymore. I don't know. Yeah, it's quite a bit at this point, and I'm ki- I kind of miss the mystery of it all. Yeah. Uh, that's what made it spooky. He's got some other weird games, so he's got something called... um. Oh my gosh, what is it called? The Desolate Hope. I want to, I want to like play that. It looks very the odd. Weirdest, weirdest huh? night. I had the weirdest nightmare the other day. This wasn't last Ooh. night; it was the night before, mm-hmm. and it was very much. Have you ever seen fourteen oh eight? Fourteen oh eight. I don't yeah, think Stephen so. No. King. It's based on a Stephen King short story. Um, has John Cusack in it. Anything. Um. Yeah, if you ever get a chance to watch that, it's a mind fuck. But um, this movie was so, very much like that. Yeah. Uh, like, oh, oh, my dream, I guess, was very much like that. And it was so weird. Like, I was having these things where it was like I was going down a hallway and, like, you go into a room and there's, like, all this food and it looks good, like the kitchen area and everything. It's like, oh, there's grapes and there's, like, ham and there's, like, all this stuff, like, out on the table. Mm-hmm. And then you room and you go back in and it looks like it's been rotten for like 20 years ew yeah and this was you said it, the movie's called room 1408 yeah the, the movie's called 1408 it's about oh, a guy thing. It's, it's a guy that the the basis of the story is he he's a writer that goes to after his daughter he's actually a, like a, a writer that writes novels and then his daughter dies and huh. he becomes obsessed with the afterlife so he goes to all these places that are supposedly haunted and stays in the bedroom or stays in the places that are supposedly like supposed to be haunted and he writes about like his experiences. Oh because he becomes obsessed with like the afterlife and like investigating these places. And yeah. um he stays in this hotel called the Dolphin Hotel or something like that. Um and he stays in room fourteen oh eight and like everybody tells him they're like don't go in that room. Don't go in that room. And he goes into the room and uh, stays the night there. And he's like, has his video, like his uh, voice recorder. And he's like doing his writer thing. And like all this shit happens. You just, you just have to watch it. It's a, it's a mind I fuck. See that. Is this John Cusack? Yeah. Nice. I feel like I've seen bits and pieces of it. You know of it. I know of it, mm-hmm. but I don't know if I've actually taken the time to sit down and watch it, so I'm going to have to put that on the list for spooky season. Um, I didn't watch a lot of movies for many, many years, and there's a lot of movies I just didn't take interest in. Um, now I have a new appreciation of movies, so... Uh, I'm like, oh, okay. We, uh, we watched Begotten last night, sort of, <laughs> half-watching. Every time I looked back over from... The, uh, one screen to another it looked like the same thing was just happening again it's very artsy <laughs> and there's no words which i'm fine with but like uh it's visually pretty intense <laughs> and um 12 years ago seth tried to make me watch it and i like couldn't do it and i was very upset by it it was too creepy for me now it doesn't bother me now i'm just like they keep every time i look over it's the same thing if i could sum it up in a sentence uh uncanny enough art film mm. that that wraps up begotten. yeah it looked like we were just watching snuff which was questionable you know what i think but is, it's on youtube uh, yeah i think what's really interesting about the movie is that it's uh if you watch if you it's like uh it gives you a good indicator of what you can get away with on really degrade uh, like a degraded image and lighting and angles mm-hmm. and um stuff that looks extremely violent but it's probably like if you were to see it in real, anyway, it doesn't matter. What am I talking about? Um, well, welcome to that stuff and weird. I think today we're just going to have some spooky topics uh, to crank out this episode. Mm-hmm. Um, I can, I, I guess I can, I can, I don't, you know, I, I'm not going to talk about the old Bell Witch. I don't know anything about the Bell Witch, to be honest. I just, it's just kind of a kind of close to me kind of a thing. 
But what uh, what what stories do you guys have? I'm gonna make another cup of coffee real fast. Okay, you go do that. It'll be really quick, but we'll warm up. I think you should do the intro and then bail. I think we should redo the intro when you come back with coffee. Okay, I'll come back with coffee. <laughs> All right. Seth, Seth isn't functioning. Yeah, that was a have... that was definitely a cold start there. So let's um, <laughs> let's just chat and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. When he comes back, we'll do this again. <laughs> he needs so much coffee in the morning. Oh my gosh. This is, and he has an espresso machine. And it takes him quite a bit. He makes, like, I filled up, he's got this, like, he drinks out of a Pyrex measuring cup, if that tells y'all anything. And it's, like, three cups, I think. So I made three cups worth of espresso for him the other day to wake him up. And he sometimes has, like, half of another cup of that. It's a lot of espresso. I can only do one. Before you were on the podcast, Meg, I had a friend of mine come on as a guest host. And um, this guy, I worked with him. And I'm pretty sure he's a vampire, like, in real life. Oh. Not, like, not, like, faking. Like, he's not, like, dark and brooding and, like, acts like it. Like, no, he's just a – I'm pretty sure he's indestructible. Like, oh. he, is, he is a cop, and he um, doesn't die. Oh, I don't, I don't know how to explain. So he's a cop and doesn't die. Has he been he, shot or something and was fine? Yeah, you can do anything to him. He does not get hurt. Oh, oh it's dear. An, it's incredible. And he, he has Crohn's disease and he just eats, eats chicken wings and drinks nothing but like monster energy drink. That's what he lives on. That man is going to destroy yeah. his body. And I'm going to talk about his proclivities for blood, but he does have a proclivity for blood. So. Oh, dear. <laughs> Vampires look off chicken wings and monster energy. No, but this guy would come into work. He's been a guest host on here. He comes into work. He would have a one of the big, uh, well, he would be killing his Starbucks. Mm -hmm. When he would come into my office, he would throw his Starbucks away. He just, he just drank that. He had two of the twist top monsters like the big tall oh boys and then yeah. had a pack of the regular monsters he'd sit them down on my like cabinet he'd twist off and like he'd throw away a starbucks and he'd start drinking the tall boy he'd kill it throw that away pop the other one and he'd be like all right what are we doing today wow what and a that guy was, that was his diet that that's horrific <laughs> I can't do monsters. I did like the monster Java, uh, the Mean Bean, specifically. Yeah. They're terrible for you, um, but they will wake you up. And the only one of those I've ever done is the um, the locale vanilla one. I don't know they if I've had that one. Have that anymore? I didn't think they. I have never seen it again. I, I don't think, think that is possible. You said locale yeah. vanilla. It was only like hours, and it was a vanilla, yeah, it was a vanilla coffee oh. monster, so. Yeah, the mean bean is, I think, you, vanilla. Are you guys able to hear me? Yeah. Oh, now we can. Okay. Were you talking? Okay. Uh, no, I was actually trying to set it up back on oh. my computer. It seems like I am. I'll try okay. not to switch on my camera because that apparently is not helping. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. If it makes you feeling better, my, like I said, my mic wasn't working at all. Yeah, it, well, we noticed it one time when uh, we were talking to Steve Longbottom. And uh, afterwards, I noticed in the stream it was, like, not working at all. And then last night, we realized it still wasn't working. And then I fixed it. So we're good. Oh, we lost Ro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it cuts in and out. Oh no. Okay, wait, let's wait for Row and then we'll do the open again. Okay. It's warm in here. You can turn that on. I don't know what to do. I can't there if you I can't if you not let me do anything much, I'll do the rest <laughs> okay. of it. Okay. So whatever he just said. Let me know if that's too noisy, Clark and Row. It's there's a fan right behind me. Can you hear anything? Okay, perfect. Yeah. Okay, bro. I got yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll we'll roll with it. Okay. Welcome to That's Effin' Weird. Today we're going to talk about some spooky stories. Megan, why don't you go first? I, I wasn't prepared. 
<laughs> Clark, why don't you go first? I, I promise um, once once everything starts jogging, I'm I'm good. <laughs> So while everybody is getting chemically induced, a.k.a. coffee, setting in, this is a very early recording uh, for some of us. <laughs> for Ro, not so much. Uh, yeah, I'll talk about the, um, so my hometown uh, is a little little place called Augusta, Georgia. And it's a, a big city on the river. It's the second biggest city in Georgia um, after Atlanta. Uh, most people will say Savannah is bigger. It's not. Sorry. Um, but it's uh, snuggled up on the Savannah River. And there uh, has a long history, actually, uh, back to the American Revolution. It actually has the oldest newspaper in the world, dating back to 1783. So there's cool. a shout out to my Augusta peeps. Um, yeah, way to go with your newspaper. Um, but there's a tale that comes from that city uh, that lasted for a long time and unfortunately there's going to be a sad ending to this story but I'm going to weave it, weave our way through this and see what we can do so there used to be an unfortunate slave market in downtown Augusta um, big pillars big high arch top similar to you see in a lot of southeastern harbor towns um, and the rumor, I guess, the story, because the history is actually kind of fuzzy on it, that this was like just a regular market, or possibly it was a slave market, or maybe it was just a market and slaves were sold in it. So it's terrible. It's a terrible part of our American history, but we have to go with what it is. But the rumor is a tornado took out this entire market. Oh. All right, just ruined it. And... So if nobody knows about the geography of Augusta, Georgia, it's actually in a valley going down to the Savannah River. So tornadoes do not happen often. They have to, like, drop directly into downtown Augusta if they are going to hit. Because clouds break up. The, the actual updraft breaks up when it gets into the river valley. So tornadoes happen farther in or they happen on the South Carolina side of the river but they don't actually happen in Augusta so for a tornado to happen must be like an act of God it must be like a freak incident for it to happen and it took out this entire market well, so all that was left of this market was one standing pillar and the local legend was that there was a slave who was on that pillar who literally put his blood on it and said, like, I curse the people of this city in here. Basically doing like a blood curse kind of thing, saying like, you'll never be forgiven for what you did here. Mm -hmm. And so this pillar stood uh, for, gosh, the next 300 years. And... It was a local legend around here uh, where, like I said, where I grew up, um, that you couldn't touch it. You were never supposed to touch that pillar. Like grandfathers, fathers, sons, everything. Like it got passed down. Don't ever go near that pillar. Don't touch it. You touch oh, wow. it, you'll bring, you'll bring curse upon your family. And there was a lot of people who tested that. And there's a lot of mysterious deaths that happened so people would like touch it being like they wanted their picture with it or something like that they touch it and then that person would die of a heart attack in a week something like that there's a and and it sounds like crazy but there's actually like a lot of uh documented actual things because this is actually in the medical district of that city and um yeah people would crash cars into it there was there was somebody who actually accidentally drove their car into it. It was like less than five miles an hour. They hit it. What? And they found the person dead in the driver's seat. Whoa. Yeah. Oh. Okay, that's crazy. What? Yeah. So like this was like a big thing for a long time and it became celebrated. It became a big Halloween attraction. Like people try to keep their distance from it. They made a bar like next to it and celebrating it. It became like a big 
like kind of thing where it's like okay this is like a, a thing now it's like nationally known like you don't touch this pillar or you're gonna die because it's cursed so it became colloquially known as the haunted pillar um now recently i hate to say in the last two years somebody finally drove fast enough to take the pillar out yeah so it is just now a foundation and they have put up a marker for it which i applaud so 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 the so the photo you showed me that's not it's not like that at all anymore no they they, that is about two years ago it's only been Uh, within it's only been within two years that it actually got destroyed that makes me so sad if we had just focused all that energy on the georgia guidestones instead of that the georgia guidestones mm-hmm. yeah. what are those oh I, I this is one thing i guess i have i'm i feel horrible not informing you of the georgia guidestones anyway terrible stones uh uh, uh what, what would you call it global elitist uh philosophy and culling the population and this and that and uh oh, uh, uh but basically like the ten commandments for uh billionaire jerks that want to kill everybody and uh, oh. it's in Georgia, in the middle of nowhere, and some beautiful person blew it up one night, and they had to destroy it, and I hope they don't bring it back. Anyway, sorry. Oh. oh okay. <laughs> well, how, many, how, how many languages was it in, Clark? Oh, gosh. It had, um, well, no, it was, it, I mean, because it wasn't, like, runic. They did it in, like, Greek, or they did it in, uh, was it Greek, Hebrew. Latin? Something else. Hebrew, yeah. Greek, Latin, Hebrew. Hebrew. Arabic, I think. Or I think I can't. I can't tell. Hmm. Interesting language choices. I there was a Engli- uh, There was English, and I believe uh, simplified Chinese. Anyway, doesn't matter. They're terrible. Um, but well, um, just so was the was the pillar itself obliterated, or is there? A- possibility they have remnants saved well i mean you're never going to be able to actually put it back together like it was i mean it's very yeah. empty dumpty at this point it got broke it's not gonna go back but there is the the foundation and they are putting up a, like a marker to say hey this is where this was because it actually is a historical marker regardless it was a market yeah. it's part of the history of that city so uh, yeah, wonder what they do with the remains of it. Like, do you think they store it somewhere, or do you think they just toss it? I'm more curious about the people that had to clean it up. Like, how many people actually were like, because they grew up around here. Like, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I wouldn't. Have yeah, touched. I mean, I'm I'm not superstitious, but at the same time, I'm like, eh, I don't know. That's like, I grew up around this thing. I wouldn't touch it. <laughs> like, I don't want to yeah. really be part of it. <laughs> yeah, if I grew up like knowing this thing in my hometown was cr- I don't think I would touch it either. Yeah, it's it's like the boogeyman for this city. Like everybody yeah. knew about it. Nobody fucked with it. Like that was the thing. Right. And the fact that it got destroyed was by a, a car accident because it was I mean, it's very exposed. It's right on the road. Like Yeah. It, all it takes is a car accident or a drunk driver or something like that, you know? Yeah. Um, quick, sh- uh, A, B, yes, it is AM radio. What's AM radio? This is ra- AM radio. <laughs> so, okay. But I encourage um, all of you to, um, if you actually go to Wikipedia, I believe, <laughs> if you just say the haunted pillar on Wikipedia, it will draw you immediately Ooh. to that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, Megan or Ro, time for your creepy story. Ro, do you want to go first? Oh, or do you, do you need time? I, I need time, yeah. I kind of have one. If you need some time, I can kind of spin one here. There is, um, there is a town in Tennessee called Portland. Um, many, many years ago, I found out, I did not grow up there or anything like that, but I visited there. And, um, 
I found out there is this road. I think it's I believe it's called Tunnel Road. And I think a railroad track ran through there or does still or something. I don't remember because there was a little teeny tiny like I think there's like a post office there. Maybe it used to be part of the main town. I'm not totally sure, but it's just a really old part of the outskirts of Portland, I guess. And they say there is a woman in white that walks along the tunnel uh, that is on that road. I could be telling this completely wrong. Um, this is very local. I don't believe this is documented anywhere. Um, and someone drove me there at night and was telling me this story, and I was absolutely horrified. <laughs> I don't remember how the, the woman supposedly died, but apparently she roams that area. They also have a place in that same town called the Chicken Graveyard. It is not a graveyard for chickens. It is just a tiny little graveyard in the middle of the woods. In, in the countryside because Portland is very rural. Um, it's like... Why is it called that, though? I'm not sure why it's called Chicken Graveyard. I just picture a bunch of disembodied chickens going... Oh. No, <laughs> I don't know why they call it the Chicken Graveyard. Uh, but there's a lot of... Uh, a lot of people buried there. Um, <clears throat> I want to see if I can find... Here we go. Let's see if I can find anything on it. The best chicken, the best 10 chicken shops near Portland, Tennessee. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I'm not, I, I can't, I guess that's what they just call it. I don't know what the actual official name of it is because they have a couple of cemeteries there, but it's an old cemetery. It's, um, and I think people are still being buried there. I feel like. This was like probably 15 years ago that I went there because I got, I was driven up over there too. Um, but yeah, it's just in the middle of the woods. Well, the cool thing about Tennessee is uh, if you find a cemetery on your land and it's like, you know, 1800s and it's, you, you literally find it, uh, it's grandfathered in and you can start reburying people there. So that's cool. That's my dream. My dream is to make a family crypt that uh, I'll I'll find I'll I'll kind of fish around for a a large piece of property in the middle of nowhere and and find us like just old headstones or whatever and then that will be the family crypt. So we have a lot of those. I mean, I feel like there's a lot of those across America in general, but Tennessee. I, I, I the goal of... would be to like re to uh, exhume family members and bring them to the like everyone's in like it's kind of it would be nice to uh, i remember okay here, like a big I, sleepover. I changed my mind i have i have Forever. one creepy story well it's not really creepy it's just a story i was a kid and uh my sister took me to an old 1800 cemetery that was uh fallen over it was in the middle of nowhere and you had to like do a lot of crawling under barbed wire and stuff and trucking to actually find it. Apparently it was where all the high schoolers went to go smoke or whatever back in the eighties. And, um, I went there, I saw the graves. I saw holes near the tombstones. I, I remember that very vividly. Don't know if it was collapsed. I don't know if it was just old stuff that had collapsed or if, uh, uh, people were just digging around. I have no, I really don't know, but, uh, it uh and to this day i can't find it and uh i've been looking and looking i have all kinds of pins everywhere and i think that it was uh literally a um poltergeist situation where a because because very close to there there's a develop uh, a development or whatever and i think that they just pay tobacco operator to shove it all in a ditch or something because uh that happens more than people realize and then they put a huge i mean they're not going to have like a multi-million dollar uh, project go to waste so they'll do that but it's somewhere and uh it it was really cool but what was i don't remember where this was going you were t- talking <laughs> about a graveyard that you couldn't find again i just can't find it it was it was creepy i remember going oh that's what it was uh family crypts the the way that it was the way it was laid out was dry stack uh family plots there was even one tombstone that was a quad tr- tombstone of a family. It was on each side. Someone was buried. Oh, it was oh. really cool. And I, I think that uh, that kind of 
cemetery come back. It's just land is such a premium in this weird new world. So uh, everyone's just going to get stacked on each other. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, I've always wanted to go and visit uh, New Orleans and see their um, cemeteries. I, I know they're kind of a kind of a mess because the the water is pushing bodies, you know, out of the ground. And is that near Nick Cage's? That's where Nick Cage is going to have. He has a, he has a pyramid, uh, mausoleum type situation. It's pretty intense. Um, and uh, it would just be cool to visit there. But and sometimes uh, I look up like you know hotels and things like that. I'm like, you know what? It's not that far. Go visit there. And I'm like. Do I want to? One eight hundred seems salty, <laughs> and they want to know my opinion on uh, uh, trans illegal aliens. I'll save that. I do have opinions on trans illegal aliens, but I'll save that for another another time. Um, and uh, oh I'm gosh. I'm I'm quite comfortable on this site, but and I'm real. Oh no. So, uh, but all right. So, moving on to Nick's spooky story. You're, are you all tapped out? Oh yeah, that was it. That's um, all I had. Okay. Um. So I do have a story, but um, it's a it's a real life incident. It's definitely spooky and disturbing, at best. Oh. So, yeah, listeners' discretion. Trigger warning. Everything I've thrown out right now. So um, this is about a couple um, in India um, and they were not able to, you know, like the woman was not able to bear a child despite being married for 19 years. Um, and I don't know why, I, I think they exhausted all means and approach of, uh, you know, having a child. So they went to an occultist. Um, who instructed them to eat a child's liver <gasps> to help them beget one. What? Yeah. Wait, wait, like, was the kid a... Was this, like, a kid that died and they they gave them a liver from a kid that had died in the hospital or something? Or no, they're so like, go get a kid so, and get yeah. their liver? It's open to interpretation, right? So, but oh dear. what the folks did is uh, and this is quite a recent one just four years back on November 14 um, 2020 four people including this couple um, they killed a seven year old girl <gasps> and uh, were found guilty um, for obviously killing her and devouring her liver and other vital parts at the request of um, that Occultist or black magic practitioner, what do you want to call? That's mm. horrific. Yeah. So what happened is the husband had enlisted the help of his nephew and uh, his friend, who were the girl's neighbors for this murder. And so what happened is the girl had stepped out of her home to purchase something from the neighboring shop. And she didn't return for a long time. So naturally, her family started searching for her. But unfortunately, her disfigured body was discovered the next morning in a field near the village. She was not wearing any clothes and her blood-soaked slippers were nearby. Oh. And these two men had kidnapped the girl on Saturday night. Um, unfortunately, they first tried to rape her and then heartlessly, you know, killed her. And after oh, this, they allegedly extracted the liver from the girl's body and took it to the couple as, you know, for them to complete that ritual. That's so bad. <laughs> yes. I mean, we have some and pretty bad stuff that happens here too, so <laughs> I feel like, but that I've definitely never heard of um, uh, eating a child's liver to have a child. That's a new one. Yeah, I mean, of course, there were several teams that were deployed to crack this case open. And the girl's neighbors, these two, I mean, the husband's nephew and his friend, were um, picked up first based on suspicion. Um, and immediately uh, upon questioning, they confessed everything 
and they said the couple had paid them money to do this and guess what was the amount if i have to oh convert in, in us dollars it's it was just 20 dollars approximately <gasps> bro yeah so oh, this trial took yeah. almost three years so and the accused couple uh, together with those two uh, men were sentenced to life in prison which i think is not enough but no at least it's never enough something. yeah that's so bad yeah. um, man we got dark <laughs> um i'm uh you know there's a I man I, I i have like several of those that i could think of um that some not quite that well you know i'll say yeah i i'm, I'm <laughs> sorry but i i no, no, no. i think i have this history in this podcast that i always bring the most darkest most gruesome <laughs> topic to the table it's good it's good i mean it's unfortunate for the people who had it happen yeah. to them but Oh man, how do I save this? Uh, also, Seth had to step away for uh, th some. There was a call, so I, I apologize. He had to step out. I don't know when he's coming back. He had to leave the vicinity. So uh, I'm here. Okay. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm glad you're giving me the live commentary because I am connected through my cell phone and I cannot see either of your videos. Oh no! So. Oh, <laughs> you're mortified. <I'm> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Of course. <laughs> of course um, you are. That's crazy though. Like I it, it, I really wonder why people what drives them to do something that horrific. You know, what puts mm -hmm. them on the edge like that and why it like why people do unhinged things to begin with? Is it just like the environment they're raised in? Uh is it like cuz there's a lot of just insane stuff it happens everywhere but here um i think we were talking about scientology the other day like just privately not on anything and i was like why do people think that stuff is real <laughs> and why do they let people control their lives he's like i don't know iq or maybe it's just like really good um manipulation and I, or it's money because I, I try to figure out why people what what make what is making people tick you know and i don't know I don't know, sure. and this was this was very stupid. I mean, if I have to think logically, India has such a huge population. You could just go ahead and adopt a child. Yeah, yeah. How, I mean, how did that not uh, here? Sorry. Here, um, in the states, foster care is like an absolute nightmare. I hear. Um, I've personally never experienced it, but I hear a lot of people. Uh, with foster care and adoption have some rough times and some things are good but um, some things are can be pretty rough uh, man oh, something that bothers me and I, like I said I'm going to get on a soapbox for a second and I really don't care what our viewers think um, do it the thing that bothers me about this story is the fact that issualistic cannibalism is worldwide it's not localized mm -hmm. anywhere. Mm -hmm. like, that's the thing. That is everywhere. What yep. bothers me is the sexual assault. Yep. Yes. Why is that fucking necessary? What? Sorry. No, yeah, yeah I agree. Personal yeah, thing I with people that I know immediately, and that fucking bothers me. I mean, yeah. You can get a fucking liver wherever you want. I mean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I oh, mean, I it's like to disrupt somebody's life yeah that's why i'm like what is it that like makes people turns can, can make people turn so violent uh what apparently seems so suddenly um and and why people can be very casual about it i guess um or it feels casual because it, it happens so much so often um a really stupid movie but at the same time has a great quote, Men in Black. Tom Lee Jones says, A person is smart. People are dumb, panicky animals. Okay, yeah. You get people yeah. together and they just, everything breaks down. Yeah. But a person can rationalize anything. 
True. True. Sorry. Absolutely. I'm sorry. I got a I got a call from uh, the local rabbi called and he's very angry, but uh, I'll talk to you in a second. Uh, I got about 20 minutes, but what did I miss? Can you fill me in really quick? Um. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it was a really a tough story that Ro told. Yeah. Oh, sad. Okay, okay. I'll just watch the replay. I watched the it was really tough. <laughs> Ro, Ro bringing the heat. Ooh. Ow. <laughs> I don't uh, want to. <laughs> no, no, no. He, yeah, he, no, he'll, he'll she'll, listen. she'll fill me in. I, I am, uh, I, th- th- this morning has been insane. So, but we're good. We're rolling. Um, uh, do you have a spooky story, Seth? I could, I, I do tell the, I do tell the George Bush apparition once a year. <laughs> oh, that one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Dude. <laughs> Clark, you probably remember this. The George Bush apparition. Uh, so we can help me on this. <laughs> uh, I, when I was a kid, uh, I wanted to stay up really late one night, and it was election night. George Bush versus Gore, and I convinced my parents that this was a historical event, and that I wanted to stay up late and watch them counting little shreds of paper in Florida, and um, and. Uh, so they were like, okay. So I, there's like this room kind of close to my folks and I was in there and there's a hallway that goes to the back of the house. And this is a really old house. And, uh, so I'm watching it. I'm watching the, the election coverage. And then, um, I see a shadowy figure in the hallway. I'm very terrified. Uh, and it's just watching me. It's just there watching me. I remember it very vividly. I still remember it. Uh, and it uh, like, and it was, I wasn't dreaming, wasn't anything like that. The TV was right here. I look over and there's just a shadowy figure watching me from the hallway that leads to the be- old back part of the house. And um, I yelled for my folks. Uh, they came in and tried to say it was a dream, but it wasn't a dream. I really saw it. And I, that is my only supernatural story I've got. So you were how old? Seven or eight? Uh, to, uh when Nine? was the election? Ninety nine or two thousand? Oh, I have two thousand. Two thousand. So you would have been like eleven, almost. Ten. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Eleven. Um, it's very interesting that you were even watching an election at that age. I, I, I didn't understand anything going on at that age. I just wanted to make Sonic OCs and uh play Pokemon and watch Sailor Moon and bullshit like that. So. Mm. Uh, so they're, they're very different. <laughs> um, I do have an experience with sleep paralysis, um, and seeing oh. a figure that was awful. I remember this was like about 10 years ago, almost I had taken, um, some melatonin and I refuse to take it now. <laughs> I only took like one little tablet. It was like five milligrams or whatever, the lowest amount of melatonin. And um, I remember I was having difficulty like breathing because apparently there is some side effect of melatonin for some people where it makes them feel like they're not breathing properly. Um, and I thought I had sleep apnea and I was just like, what, what is happening? But um, I remember one night because I was trying to sleep like normal and not stay up all night because um, I didn't want to like lose my job and like sleep in or whatever. So um, I took the melatonin. I went to bed. I remember waking up unable to move my body i'm looking at my bedroom door which is open and i lived in a very tiny apartment at the time and there was a shadowy figure of a man just filling up the whole space of my bedroom door and he was slowly walking towards the bed and i was trying to scream i couldn't and i couldn't move my body i felt like my eyes were wide open i was had i felt like i was opening my mouth and like trying to scream and nothing was happening and it was so real feeling and then I woke woke up, I guess, and I was covered in a cold sweat and still having difficulty moving. And but I was just like, "What just happened?" It was awful. It's almost do not it's recommend. Kind of old hag syndrome adjacent. Yeah. Boo mm. hags. Old hag. yep. mm. They mm. sit on your chest. Mm-hmm. So, low so on boo hags. Yeah. 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 I. <laughs> 
that was like I feel like that ha- has happened. Was Sleep also paralysis incubus. is like twice. Incubus. Oh, incubus. like the demon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Actual demon that comes in night and sits yeah. on your chest. So, yeah. Or succubus Ooh. if you're on the flip side. Oh. But, yeah. No, that's that's the explanation for it. And yeah, I actually at a very young age had control over it. Sadly, mm-hmm. like I could actually have out of body experiences like I but I was aware like I knew I was doing it so oh. I had this I had this little tape recorder yes I'm that old little tape recorder I would put on and it would help me go to sleep and that's why I still do white noise to go to sleep to this day but um I would put it on and I was able to actually get into a state where like I knew like almost that hypnagogic like state where you, you know when you feel like you're falling but you're body jerks you awake yes it was that but like i didn't jerk awake like i could like i was very young i was 12 probably at the time 11 12 i was able to actually like get in that state where you're falling but you didn't jerk awake and you could just see everything around you yeah so i thought for a while that like dreamscaping was possible i thought that like uh if there was such thing as like MK Ultra and like um, remote viewing, that's the closest yeah. I ever think that that was real. Um, I can't reproduce it anymore in my age, but like, uh, but yeah, like it, I, it, it me to this day just have a sliver of, like I said, I'm a skeptic, but at the same time, it makes me have that sliver of maybe there's something to it. Maybe there is actually something to it. Like, you can get outside your body for a minute. Maybe so. I, Maybe. I, th- I think that there's something to that. Um, I think that uh, I think I had a friend in high school that didn't really joke around that much. So I kind of take this ser- night. I take that he believes it's serious. Uh, but he, he's talked about um, whenever he would go to bed there would be a smoking man in the corner in a hat, which Ooh. is oh, oddly similar. And this was before people were taking tons of Benadryl to meet the hat man. Like, um, so, yeah, it's just weird. It's weird when like a bunch of kind of old stuff and new stuff and everything, it sounds super similar. What is the hat man exactly? Uh, apparently, if people take like 50 Benadryl, uh, so they'll bad. go into like a dissociative. That was a very specific number. <laughs> yeah, a dissociative <laughs> trip of some kind, and um, there there's uh, just tons of multiple reports of a man in a hat. It's, so... it's always like a shadowy figure. It's that's what's weird about what I saw. It, it kind of fits the descriptor of some of this stuff, and and so it, it's just strange. It, and it seems like a certain age sees them, but anyway. You know, I I I used to have a lot of um dreams of like deja vu, I guess, where I would dream about something that had not happened yet. And it was very mundane stuff, like just hanging out with my family while they're grilling or something in like a at a future point. Or just things like that. And when the event would actually occur, I'd be like, this has happened before. I've, I've had, like, I've dreamed about this, but years ago or like a few months ago or something. So for a while, I thought when I was a child, I was like, ooh, am I having like psychic, future, <laughs> weird, really stupid, mundane prediction? <laughs> um, it was very odd. I feel like I had one in the last, like, 10, at least one in the last 10 years. Um, and it was very strange, but uh, I don't remember what the like r- most recent thing is. But I remember like one very specifically. I remember as a child, I, th- um, I had a dream about standing on my cousin's back porch, looking out. It was like sun was setting. It was evening. You know, sun was already down, but the sky was kind of still pink and whatever. And uh, my uncle was grilling um, on their back porch and we were just hanging out. And that was it. And like, uh, you know, when that happened, I was like probably in sixth or seventh grade. And I was like, I've been here. And that's one I remember very specifically. And it just kind of happened, you know, happened. that's not spooky. It's just kind of dumb and weird, I guess. <laughs> Anyways, 
I can tell one more story before we get into like, because I I've told Seth that I'm gonna do an entire episode where I just tell like some of the weird stuff um, that I've seen. And I once again, everybody that's listened to that stuff and weird, I'm a skeptic, very much a skeptic. But I have stuff that's because I used to give ghost tours as a job, yeah. just a college job and everything. So like I have some weird things that are just unexplainable. Um, but this is like a, a, a side note. I don't consider this part of my like weird stuff, but it is since we're on this topic, I will tell this story. Um, I had a friend and I will call him a friend. He's more of an acquaintance. Um, I for anyone who's heard the side stories here, I think Seth knows I play college baseball. Like so I play baseball basically from T-ball all the way up through high school. And then I play D1 college baseball, which is you know rare. A lot, not a lot of people get up there. So I did a lot of training camps and I did a lot of like side stuff that a lot of people don't do um, specialized training thing. I was a pitcher and one of my acquaintances, a good friend of mine, I guess we'll call him that, um, was a catcher. So we got paired up basically because he was a catcher, I was a pitcher and we had like specialized coaches that were basically training us to go to college and be possibly future major leaguers. Obviously I didn't get there because that's super rare. <laughs> Nobody, I mean... You're in the point oh 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 one percent to ever get there. Um, <clears throat> but he was a guy that I knew. He went to a different high school than I do, uh, different middle school, different high school than I did. And um, uh, but we were paired up together uh, because of our coaches, mentors. And um, so I spent a lot of time around this guy and his dad was a, a like a you know, little league coach or middle, what do you, what they call pony league coaches. It's like 14 to 15 year olds kind of thing. You're not little league, but you're in high school kind of thing. Um, so I, I, I spent a lot of time around this guy and um, we got to high school. We were in rival high schools. We played against each other, um, all this stuff. And then we get up to the point, he was a year older than me. So he graduated the year before me. So he graduates, he goes off and he goes to play for UNC, which is uh, University of North Carolina. Um, and then, uh, I won't, once again, anonymity, I won't say what college I went to play for, but I graduated the next year. I went to play for D1 school and we didn't get to play against each other because um, that off season, he was driving back to college and got into a car wreck and was launched. He was actually ejected from his vehicle and went from uh, off an overpass and died. So um, I went to his uh, viewing. Yeah, I went to his viewing and um, like rewind for a second. Before I went to his viewing, what was weird was the morning, um, like I had, I, I was dreaming. It was like in REM sleep. I was like in a good mood. I was sleeping, I'm off. And um, I had a dream where I was sitting in my bed and it wasn't my bed I was in. It was my bed at my home, in my hometown, uh, like at my parents' house. And I had a dream. I was in that bed and he came up to the bedside and sat down and said, how would your mom tell you if, if one of your friends died? That's literally what he said to me. And I don't know why he was in my dream. And I was like, I don't know. And I woke up and my woke up because my phone was ringing and it was my mom calling me to tell me that he was dead. Oh, shit. Oh, that's that's crazy. that's and wild. 100 percent. All that stuff and weird viewers. I am a skeptic. I, I. I don't know. I have no fucking answer for this. It bothers me to this day. I'm 41 years old. This happened when I was 19. Damn. Yeah, yeah, that's really intense. Yeah. Yes. That's uh, all he said. Like... Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's all he said I in the dream was, how would, your, how would your parents tell you if one of your friends died? That is all he said. On, he sat down on the edge of the bed and said that. That's all it was. Hmm. I wonder so sometimes if, if we're able to when we enter into a sleep state, if we're, if there's like a barrier that's kind of brought down and we're able to, this sounds very woo woo. I am also very much a skeptic, 
I wonder if there's like a a veil essentially brought down or lifted and we can kind of pick up the frequency of the dead essentially or things like that. I'm wondering or just something like that, specifically when we sleep. Um Well they say <laughs> Like, not to get too scientific on it, but from a physics standpoint, they say that they know that electrons vibrate at a certain uh, level that they can be in two different places across the universe at any given time. And that's some of the basis they give for uh, remote viewing. So, like, okay. I, like I said, this is stuff that bothers me where I'm a skeptic, but it, I will study it so hard to try to figure out, like, is there something to it? Is there something where our molecules are vibrating at some kind of thing where we can be in two places at the same time? Like maybe our subconscious yeah. is somewhere where our conscious is not, or I don't know. That's that I, might I, be a talk about for another time. Yeah, are you talking about somebody, quantum somebody smarter than me needs to do it. <laughs> are you talking about quantum entanglement? Basically, yeah, but yeah, yes, somebody yeah. needs. To... <laughs> That's the that's the what who who's the one down that has a lab in it? Is it Lockheed Skunk Works or whatever? Lockheed There's, Martin or uh, <laughs> who's who's the Skunk Works? Skunk Works. I don't know. I have no idea which. Lock, uh, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. Is it Raytheon? There is a there. There's like a there's like a it's like Raytheon Skunk Works. It's something like that. It's something Skunk Works. Anyway, so mili they're a military contractor. And they have a base in Antarctica, and they have sensors uh, deep in the ice, and it, and there are electricians on the base and all kinds of stuff. They fly in and out. And the official story that you can look up on Google is that they're they're trying to uh, detect certain particles from space, and Antarctica is like a perfect place with like no interference and that kind of thing. And so their sensors are super sensitive and in the ice. There's a guy that came out that is was a uh, he he had a dual role as a fire inspector and an electrician, um, and uh, uh, there. And his story is is that the there is a whole section uh, uh, that is being powered that is not being that is not. He's considered a whistleblower. He's been on a few podcasts, and uh, that there are they are actually working on quantum entangling particles so that they can separate those particles do deep space missions and uh, communicate in real time without any lag or radio or any anything like that which, which would be a revolutionary idea in communications that it would be instantaneous communications at any point in the universe any two points in the universe and uh that's his claim uh he got mm -hmm. fired and is now going around saying all of this stuff. So I don't know what's true or whatever. It does seem that he provided proof of employment down there. Um, oh. But that's quite a crazy story. Uh, quantum entangled communications for real-time deep space missions. Um, Interesting. This episode has gone um, in from, from spooky to sci-fi spooky. Yes. Um, oh, when we, when we do a full episode of this stuff too, I, like I said, I've got a I've got a bunch of cool stories to do from ghost walks. Ooh. And stuff. Yeah. But we'll get into some yeah. time. We'll, we'll do stone stone uh, stone tape theory. We'll do some stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll get into some mm -hmm. things. We'll I kind of want to look up the dream <laughs> stuff, the deja vu, predicting premonition, mm -hmm. whatever that is, because I want to know. I. I want to know more about what that means, so maybe I need to do some research about that. Get into my. I have a couple phase. of. Sorry, I I just wanted to say I had a couple of urban legend stories. Ooh. Um, maybe not as dark. <laughs> oh um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, the first one is um, based out of Rajasthan in India, and this was um. I, I don't know when, but there's this village in Rajasthan. Where, I mean, this village has 84, um, you know, um, houses or mini, it's it's kind of a mini village, a village within a village. I, I'm not making sense, but yeah. But within a night, it ceased to exist. Oh. Um, so people say that the villagers left their homes, but no one saw them leaving. So, uh, so, according to an urban legend, um, 
the the minister of a king wanted to marry the daughter of the village chief so but everybody knew that he was not a good person so uh, when he was rejected the minister warned them to give him the girl within 24 hours or they will face consequences oh no the entire village thought that you know we'd rather leave than you know give our daughter to him yeah but before but before they took off apparently they put a curse of death on that village and after that day anybody who tried to live there has you know faced death even today um i mean that village and that and that place still stands um and there's literally a board from um the archaeological department of india asking tourists to you know kind of not stay beyond 7 p.m oh whoa <laughs> that's creepy not you gotta oh, leave by goodness. seven y'all get out <laughs> that's yeah. unsettling so, so, um, that's like a big thing yeah. <laughs> But I'm sure they have their own reasons, um, you know, to make the tourists stay away. I'm sure it must be, there must be a death trap <laughs> because there's oh. no electricity. It's, it's an old uh, structure, you know, and yeah, that might be one of the reasons. But yeah, that's an urban legend. There's, um, on a lighter note, um, there, there was an urban, urban legend when I was young, uh, uh, when I was in school in the 90s in Mumbai. Um, there was a rumor floating around among the kids that there exists a ghost, a lady with three heads <laughs> who roams around the streets of Mumbai and rings the doorbells of the houses. Apparently, she knew who's alone in the house, which child is alone in the house. And if you open the door, you become her victim. <laughs> and the second <laughs> That's like Bloody and Mary second... or something here. <laughs> yeah. And and the second version of the story was that she used to carry off children walking alone on the streets. And what made it more scary for us was this ghost was not operating only at night. This was a 24-7 ghost, was a very busy lady. No. I feel like there's some some uh <laughs> Some pulling of legs happening right now. I feel like parents are like, don't be outside because the three headed lady ghost will get you and yes. uh, be home on time. <laughs> I'm speaking for I'm all sure it must be that. <laughs> speaking for all of our male viewers, um, I can I can barely deal with a single headed lady. <laughs> a single headed my... lady. <laughs> I'm trying right now. <laughs> I am a patient. I am a patient woman. She is. She's very patient. I'm very patient. If I had three um, heads to me, I'm doing the dishwasher wrong. God. <laughs> oh, we got a deal. And, I, don't touch, I don't touch dishes. Yeah. I'm incapable of doing he it. is incapable. Um, <laughs> got to shred responsibility. He can cook, though. He can cook. I'm yeah. not a fan of cooking. So I do the dishes. Um, give a nice lady's touch to the kitchen. I found yeah. that I do all the cook. I well, I, know, I won't say I do all the cooking, but I do a majority of the cooking. Yeah, I like cooking. I I like I like the quality control, I like knowing what's in my food. I like experimenting. Uh, but I am so sad to announce I have to go. Yeah. I am running out of time. We are already late. Oh yeah, we gotta um, get going. And, all right. But this was awesome. Uh, yeah. Row Clark, thank you. Um, hope everyone enjoyed it. Anybody want to sign off? Like, how do we want to do that? I mean, I don't have anything uh, particular that I need to um, push right now, but uh, I, I would like to thank our viewers for being patient with us. We, we've had some gaps here. Um, we've all had some stuff going on, but thank you again. I am Clark, a.k.a. The Raven Michael Snakebite. If you want to check out my Instagram or anything like that, you're welcome to. Nice. All right. Or do you want me to sign off the whole podcast? By anybody who wants to sign, I can off, do that. sign off. Yeah, sign off, Rose, Clark. Seth, Meg, myself, thank you again for being loyal followers. 
Uh, we are That's Effin' Weird. We hope to have a fishbowl for you soon. So check in and goodbye. Goodbye. Bye bye. <laughs> there we go. Well, that was fun. Oh, I'm Whoop. so nauseous from all that coffee and nicotine. <laughs> I, uh, I am. I'm like sweating. I had to, I had a call. I had to run up somewhere and get something. Uh, I'm all sweat. It's awful. <laughs> oh my! You gotta stop dipping. Dude. So, uh, dude, I got <laughs> in my system three. What back in 2020? I think 2021. I got, feel wait, what out of your system? Nicotine. nicotine. I feel better than I've ever felt. What, 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 how did you administrate it? Are you talking about smoking or like chew or? No, smoking. So, oh, yeah. See, I mean, I used to smoke, and these zines are amazing. It's just I overdid it to be as coherent on the podcast as possible. Seth is not a morning person. This is a (laughs) rare occasion. So, it's, it's, it's good as he takes care of his body and is like particular that he takes care of his body. I feel like he should just like clean it out and just. I maybe I think not being I think, a dad, but I'm just I think, hey, all I'm saying is the research on nicotine being oh dear neuro, neuroplasticity, uh, oh, you know, a lot of different key benefits, aka he has a vice, including. Uh, <laughs> well, I can't wait till I come to Nashville, and you're gonna have to explain to my girlfriend why I started smoking again. Oh my gosh. <laughs> hey, just do a zine. He said to do a nicotine Neuro- from a brain. I need to nic- brain. <laughs> it would be so cool to do, do this thing we've been planning forever, which would be all hang out and I don't know, podcast from a campfire or something, but we'll get to that. It's just uh work and everything else. It's been nuts, but um, but I, we, we do have to go. I, uh, uh, and Ro, thank you for being on. I know it's late over there. It's either early or no, late. I feel bad. <laughs> no, but th- this is a very decent time rather than getting up 6.30, 7.30 in the morning on weekends. Yeah. Okay. I know it sucks because it's like it's like almost 10 p.m. for us, but then it's like so early for you. And I feel so bad every time whenever we <laughs> do it on a Saturday or Friday night. Um, yeah. So yeah, That's thanks so for being nice. a trooper, bro. No problem. <laughs> All right, we will see you guys soon. It was fun hanging out. We should do this again very soon. Yeah, morning yeah. times are fun for you know. But we well, did. I wasn't talking about morning. <laughs> <laughs>